master's in architecture and master's in historic preservation from the University of Pennsylvania's Weitzman School of Design. Scott holds uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in architecture from the Delane, uh, Tulane School of Architecture. They began their practice in historic Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and since 2004 have been working on federal projects. They relocated to Washington in 2009 at the invitation of an established firm. In 2015, they returned to their partnership, previously paid in De La Fuente as Citadel DCA. Uh, the practice is focused solely on heritage architecture. Their current projects are located in DC, Virginia, Maryland, and P Pennsylvania, um, ranging from vernacular Pennsylvania 18th century farmsteads to mid-century works. In addition to restoration, rehabilitation, and adaptive reuse projects, they specialize in historic structures report and HEMA has offered 11 of those, um, including for Blair House, EEOB, and other important buildings. Um, currently the service architects for the U.S. Treasury as part of a five-year IDIQ um, contract, um, and they've recently com re com uh, completed the rehabilitation of the Great Hall at the National Building Museum and Terrazzo Restoration at FTC. Um, both serve on their advisory board for the Master's in Preservation Studies at Tulane, and regularly undertake pro bono work as part of their commitment to advancing preservation at all levels. Um, so with that, um, I would like to hand it over to uh, Hema and Scott. Hey, good evening, everyone. Let me see if I can get this uh, changed over for you. And this should do it. Okay, so uh, here we go. Good evening. Um, thanks for joining us and thank you for that introduction, Bill. Uh, this is a GSA project that we uh, were awarded in fall of 2017 and was completed in December of 2018. Uh, the contact, the contract vehicle uh, was uh, design build and we'll discuss the significance of this type of delivery vehicle to the successful outcome of the work. Um, here is an image from Indiana Limestone Company in 1929 uh, and perhaps some of these gentlemen uh, worked on uh, the hemicycle and in the lower right you can see some of the team members from our project in the arcade of the hemicycle. Um, so uh, this was a design build effort. The team was led by prime general contractor, the Meridian Group out of Leesburg, Virginia, who we have worked for and continue to work with on many preservation design build projects. The conservators were Evergreen Architectural Arts out of Manhattan and Washington, uh, the Masons, Lord and Stone from Springfield, Virginia, and metals conservators up in studios located in New Jersey and Washington, D.C. Uh, for GSA, the project manager was Rocky Irwall with preservation specialist Gary Porter and regional historic preservation officer Nancy Witherall. The scope of work, uh, which the majority of was the masonry cleaning, included uh, the cleaning of the Indiana limestone and the Tennessee crab orchard flagstone floor as well as cleaning of eight monumental bronze sconces, various grillage, fire hydrants, and a bronze door. The design-build approach allowed a more collaborative effort, which engaged the GC, Citadel, the conservators, and the Masons in a conversation that produced a unified and informed approach to the identification of deficiencies, their treatments, and project sequencing. For those of you unfamiliar with our work, Bill did mention a few. Here, here are some examples of recent and ongoing projects. Uh, Holdman Mansion, an 1812 um, limestone house in Dependencies, which is in Locust Grove, PA. The National Building Museum, which Bill mentioned, where we recently reconstructed the floor of the Great Hall. Lancaster Theological Seminary, a 19th century Richardsonian Romanesque structure, which we are in the beginning stages of um, a full um, envelope uh, restoration. 
and assessment. Uh, Main Treasury, where last year we repaired and reconstructed the Hamilton Plaza, which you can see underway in this image, and the Cannon House Office Building, where we surveyed and documented the Wastavino Tile Dome that you see here. So um, let's go over some of the um, history uh, of, of the uh, of the site. And the image you see here, uh, the larger image is taken from the Willard Hotel in 1921, looking down Pennsylvania Avenue. The DC Municipal Building is closest to you, the Southern Railway Building, which is no longer next, and then the old post office with the clock tower in the distance. Even though from Pennsylvania Avenue, this looks fairly monumental and reminiscent of the way it is now, if you look at the aerial photo taken from the east looking west uh, from 1922, you can see that the, the um, old post office is surrounded by a series of two and a half to five story structures. The uh, Southern Railway building up here in the uh, left hand corner. Um, that area was known as Murder Bay which was also referred to as the Hooker Division, uh, so named because Civil War General Joseph Hooker's men frequented its many brothels, the more expenses of wit, expensive of which, which are located on a street nicknamed Marble Alley near what is now the National Gallery of Art. It, the 1921 GW-based map that you can see here shows the numerous small plots surrounding uh, the post office. And if you move up to the 1932 based map, you can see the overlay of the post office building, of the new post office building, the old post office building and IRS on top of all of those smaller plats. By 1924, the Public Buildings Commission recommended that the area be leveled and become the site of the new federal office buildings. And you can see this is an undated drawing showing the development of the triangle. The old post office building would be right here and the post office building by Delano and Aldrich right there. Um, the committee that was first charged with studying the uh, the street configurations was comprised of William Adams Delano, Milton Bennett Maderi, and Frederick Law Olmsted Jr., the landscape architect. Um, they were tasked with studying the street reconfigurations and traffic issues that would arise. In 1927, a seven-man committee uh, comprised of supervising architect of the Treasury, Lewis Seinman, and architects Lewis Ayers, Edward Bennett, Arthur Brown Jr., William Delano, Milton Maderi, and John Russell Pope were appointed to oversee the planning of what was referred to as the Triangle. It didn't become officially or referred to as the Federal Triangle until sometime around 1938. By 1929, each of the committee members had received their own commission to develop one of the original nine Federal bills. By 1932, the first building, Commerce, was completed. In 34, Labor, the Auditorium, ICC, and the Post Office were finished. 1935 saw the arrival of the Department of Justice and the National Archives. The Apex Building came online finally in 1938. And then 60 years later, Pay Cobb and Freed's Ronald Reagan Building closed out the development. And the aerial photo you see down below, I'll sort of take you through, this is Commerce on the left, uh, EPA, which is comprised of the Post Office, Labor, the Mellon Auditorium, ICC. This is the IRS building, the old Post Office, Justice, the Archives, FTC. And then up here is the DC Municipal Building and tucked in here, the Ronald Reagan building. So the final master plan was casually referred to within the group as the Louvre plan. 
and Delano and Aldrich look back to Paris for their inspiration, specifically the Place Vendôme by architect Jules Audouin Mansart, who took his inspiration from the early 17th century Place de Vosges. It's interesting to note not only the references of the post office to the Place Vendôme, but also the hemicycle's relationship with L'Enfant's Mall, a clear reflection of Place Vendôme's adjacency to the connection to the Tuileries. And you can see here the Place Vendôme and uh, coming down across, which in this case would be Constitution Avenue and uh, the buildings on the mall and the Tuileries representing the mall. So it, it's that, it, it's not just the reference to uh, the Place Vendôme, but I think it's also important that the relationship between the two spaces is markedly uh, similar. Um, Delano and Aldrich are shown down here below and Mansart to the right. So the, the timeline for uh, EPA uh, at the time of the post office was 1934 construction was completed. And then from 34 to 71 the, uh, was inhabited by the US post office. From 71 to 1990, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, explosives, sorry, and it was named for Ariel Rios, who was a drug enforcement officer that was killed in the line of duty. From 1990 to present, uh, the EPA uh, has occupied the building and it was renamed the William Jefferson Clinton Federal Building in 2013. So let's delve a little bit into the methodology of the project. Um, but a, a interesting observation here, if I toggle back, you'll see Mansart's uh, hair cascading down his shoulder. And then if you come down, you can see Caitlin Smith, one of our um, conservators taking a sample and her hair is looking markedly uh, similar. So um, the basis of design, the, the uh, the guiding, guiding principles or points that we followed as we approached the project. Uh, first and foremost is the initial research, which I, I am probably speaking to the choir when I talk about that. And in this case, uh, it didn't reveal a lot that we didn't already know, but it was interesting. We found this 1940s photograph of, uh, of the Hemicycle Arcade, and you'll notice compared to 2018, that the original light fixtures, which are really quite beautiful, are now missing. Um, so hopefully GSA will uh, turn that into its own project uh, sometime in the near future. Um, that's it. So one thing I wanted to, um, wanted to say is that, uh, and we're going to go into question and answer right now, but if, if you all have questions that we can't answer and you would like to um, uh, ask them of us, uh, you can um, send us an email, uh, put in the email epa-apt, we'll know what it is and we'll try and answer your question as best we can. So I'm going to turn this back over to Bill. So thank you everyone for joining and, and big thanks to to Scott and Hema for your willingness to, to present today. And we're gonna stick around for just a few more minutes and see if any more questions come in. I think any, anything else that comes in, as I said, we'll be happy to uh, try and answer it. And um, thank you for having us uh, part of the lecture series. Thank you so much. And um, I think this was really fantastic. And uh, yeah, um, thanks for your time. Thanks for everyone for participating. Bye, everyone. Bye.